Zeit ist, ne? So we can, um, we can invoke auspiciousness by starting by the invocation of the Srimad Bhagavatam, spoken by Vyasa Dev. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chalva Narutamam Evim Sarasvatim Vyasam Tatojaya Mudiriyat While reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the personality of God at Narayan, and to Nara Narayan Rishi, the superior human being, and to Mother Sarasvati, the goddess of learning, and unto the author, Srila Vyasadev. And today we are reading, we are continuing reading from the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Status Quo. And we are in cha on chapter five, entitled Vidura's Talk with Maitreya. Uh, and we are on text 43, unless I'm incorrect. Yeah, so it's 3543, 3543. Hare Krishna, everyone. One word, Sanskrit word at the time, you can repeat after me. Vishvasya, Vishvasya Janma, Janma Stiti, Samya Samya Arte, Krita, Avatarasya, Padam Ambujam, Te, Vajema, Salve, Sharanam, Yat, Isha, Smitam, Prayachati, Abayam, Swapumsam, Vishvasya Janma Stiti Samya Marte. Vishvasya Janma Stiti Samya Marte. Rita Vatarasya Padam Bujante. Rita Vatarasya Padam Bujante. Vajema Salve Sharanam Yanisha. Vajema Salve Sharanam Vitam Payacha Tiabayam Swapum Sam Vishvasya Jan Mastiti Samya Marte Vishvasya Jan Mastiti Samya Marte Vita Asya Padam Bujam Tem Vita Vata Asya Padam Bujam Tem Vajema Salve Shalanam Yadisha Vajema Salve Shalanam Yadisha Vita Vata Asya Padam Bujam Tem Vita Vishvasya Janma Stiti Samya Marte 
Someone online would like to chant the verse? Christy, go ahead. You're on mute, Christy. Vispa shajan ma stiti sham yamate. Vispa shajan ma stiti sham yamate. Krita vatara sha padam bujante. Krita vatara sha padam bujante. Vajem sarve saranam yadisha. Someone else would like to chat online? So we are going to do one Sanskrit word at a time and then the translation. Vishvasya of the cosmic universe. Janma creation. Stiti maintenance. Shyamyama arte. For the dissolution also. Krita. Accepted or assumed. Avatarasya. Of the incarnations. By the Ambuja. Lotus feet. Te. Yo. Rajema. Let us take shelter of. Salve. All of us. Sharanam, shelter, yat, that which, isha, O Lord, smitam, remember, remembrance, sorry, prayachati, a wording, abayam, courage, 
soit Pumsam of the devotees. Translation. Oh Lord, you assume a connection for the creation, maintenance, and dissolution of the cosmic manifestation. And therefore, we all take shelter of your lotus feet because they always award remembrance and courage to your devotees. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. For the creation, maintenance, and dissolution of the cosmic manifestation, there are three incarnations, Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwara, Lord Shiva. They are the controllers or masters of the three modes of material nature, which cause the phenomenal manifestation. Vishnu is the master of the mode of goodness. Brahma is the master of the mode of passion. And Maheshwara is the master of the mode of ignorance. There are different kinds of devotees according to the modes of nature. Person in the mode of goodness worship Lord Vishnu. Those in the mode of passion worship Lord Brahma. And those in the mode of ignorance worship Lord Shiva. All three of these deities are incarnation of the Supreme Lord Krishna because he is original Supreme Personality of Godhead. The demigod directly refers to the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord and not to the different incarnations. The incarnation of Vishnu in the material world is, however, directly worshipped by the demigod. It is learned from various scriptures that the, de no, that the demigod approached Lord Vishnu in the ocean of milk and submit their grievances whenever there is some difficulty in the administration of the universal affairs. Also, their incarnation of the Lord, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva worship Lord Vishnu and thus they are also counting among the demigods and not as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Persons who worship Lord Vishnu are called demigods and persons who do not do so are called asuras or demons. Vishnu always takes the part of the demigods but Brahma and Shiva sometimes the exercise of the demons. It is not that they become one in interest with them, but sometimes they do something in order to gain control over the demons. <laughs> oh, my Gyanati Merandasya, Gyanachala Shalakaya, Shakshun Militan Yena Tasma Shri Gorabe Namaha. Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Shta Pitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Upakadam Ayam Dadati Swapadam Tikam Vamdeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Cha Shri Rupam Sagajatam Sahagana Agunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saita Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Cha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kamsha Nagorande Radhe Vindavaneshwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Ari Puye Vansha Kalpa Taru Vyacha Kripa Sindhu Vyay Vacha Patitana Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namo Namaha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shrimate Parti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Sarasvate Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvese Shashunyavadi Pascha Chade Shatarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shiva Sadi Gauravata Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Reading the translation to the verse again. 
oh Lord, you assume incarnation for the creation, maintenance and dissolution of the cosmic manifestation. And therefore, we all take shelter at your lotus feet because they are always, they are, they always reward remembrance and courage to your devotees. Hare Krishna. So, you know, in the dialogue between Maitreya uh, Rishi and Viduha, um, Maitreya Rishi started to speak about the creation because that's where we start creation, understanding creation. Even a child, you know, like he will ask questions about creation. You know, how did that take place? How did that come to life? Why well, you came out of my belly? Wow. Well, what was before that? It would be logical for a child to ask those questions. And and so um my triarish is, is answering and and we will see like often when there is a response a question and response, there is there is often um the responder to the question, it goes into dialogue between another person and uh, or, or, or so here Maitreya Rishi is speaking about the demigods after he, the creation took place, all the Mahatadva and the different aspect of the all the elements, the senses, the sense object, the gross element, the subtle element, all that was created. Then he speak about like and the demigod were giving responsibility for the gross element. And the, the demigods, they took the responsibility. Demigods are worshippers of, of Vishnu. They are uh, they are servant of Vishnu. They know they are servant of Krishna, Vishnu. They want to worship the Lord Vishnu, and so they are subservient to uh, demigods, devotees. You can be uh, sometimes Prabhupada use those two terms almost um, to mean the same thing. Devotees, and he make a distinction between you know demigods and pure devotees. So that's some distinction we can make there too. And um, <laughs> and so the demigod, they, uh, they were um, given charge of the gross element. That's what Maitreya Rishi is describing. And they took their responsibilities, accepted their subservient, they said, okay, yes, and we are going to take this, um, but we are not capable. We are not really able to do that. It's way too much for us. And uh, interestingly, the last few days, I, I have been uh, trying to um, follow in their footsteps of the, of the demigod. And there was um, um, Shimati Radharani's festival yesterday. And uh, I, I, I really cannot trust my body so much. I don't trust my level of energy. I don't trust my body. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low, like that. And I don't trust my ability to cook. If that's insane, but still, you know, like, you know, I've cooked for so many years. I cook fish, I cook so many preps, but still there is a part of me that doesn't trust that. And so I decided to, to really meditate on the demigods because the demigods, they, they are very qualified. They are very, not that I'm qualified, but they are qualified. They are qualified. They are, uh, you know, they are elevated. They, they are in contact with Lord Vishnu. They, are, they have intelligence. They have a long life. They have strength. They have a lot of the uh, opulence, abundance of the Lord. And still, when they receive their um, task, they don't go into, I know, I know how to do that. They go into like, we don't know, we are not qualified, we're not capable. There is no way we are going to do that. But they don't do that in a grungy way. You know, like they are not going into like, so I'm going to give up, I'm going to give me an excuse to be mediocre in my life. That's not where they go. They go into like, let us take shelter of Lord Vishnu. And then they start their prayer with uh, glorifying the lotus feet of Vishnu. Like I will read their prayer because they are very beautiful. Um, I'm going to go back. So the demigod said, Oh Lord, your lotus feet are like an umbrella for the surrender souls 
So they, they are given a task and they don't right away go, oh, Krishna, just tell me how to do it. They don't go right away to like, okay, you need to give me strength or you need to give to inspiration, like the, you know, order supplier kind of relationship with God. It's one relationship, however, he likes, he likes sweetness, you know, to only go to someone to ask them for something. You know, like children, sometimes they have stages like that with their parents, where the only relationship with their parents is ask for what they want. And on the side of the parents, and on the side, it, it's not very sweet. There is something missing. So the demigods, they don't go there. They first glorify the Lord. So I'm going to continue. Oh Lord, your lotus feet are like an umbrella for their surrendered souls, protecting them from the miseries of material existence. All the sages under that shelter throw off all material miseries. We therefore offer our respectful obeisances unto you. So they are not asking for anything, they are just glorifying how protective the Lord is. Oh, you're so protective. You're so like you're the shelter of the sages. And any fear can go away just by taking shelter of you. And then they continue, O oh, Father, O oh, Lord, O oh, personality of Godhead, the living entities in the material world can never have any happiness because they have all they are overwhelmed by the three kinds of miseries. Therefore, they take shelter of the shed of your lotus feet which are full of knowledge. And we also thus take shelter of them. So then again, they are not speaking about them directly. They are speaking about those souls that are lost, lost and away from Krishna and that are being cast away in a material world. And they are not going to find any happiness until until and unless they take shelter of the Lord, of the Lord. and there, as soon as they take shelter, they get all knowledge and then they become fearless. And so then they start to say, we also want to take shelter of you. We want that, we want that. So they're just starting now to say something about themselves. And after they go, they uh, continue. They continue. The lotus feet of the Lord are by themselves the shelter of all places of pilgrimage. So people go on pilgrimage to get some purification. They go places, Mecca. Um, someone invited me to go to Lourdes. They said, can you go to Lourdes with me? Ready to uh, take care of me? I said, oh, maybe we'll go to Lourdes together. But uh, it's a Christian place in France. And the person wants me to go because I'm French. And also because um, because um, I, I, I'm maintaining the spiritual consciousness. She wanted that role, give me that role. So all the places of pilgrimage, people go to Mecca, they go to, to Vindavan, they go to those places of Israel, Jerusalem, Bethlehem, the Jordan River, all those places. Why? Because they want to purify their existence and they want to come closer to God. But then when we just surrender onto the lotus feet of Krishna, just here, Take the lotus feet of Krishna, put our head on the lotus feet of Krishna. It's like going to all the place of pilgrimage. You don't need to go anywhere. We can just stay home. So the great, the great minded sages carried by the winds of the Veda always search after the nest of your lotus like face. Some of them surrender to your lotus feet at every step by taking shelter of the best rivers, the Ganges, which can deliver one from all sinful reaction. Simply by hearing about your lotus feet with eagerness and devotion and by meditating upon them within the heart, one at once become enlightened with knowledge and on the strength of detachment, one become purified. We must therefore take shelter of the sanctuary of your lotus feet. So knowledge and detachment. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Payachitya. Kyanaya Chasu Bhaya Gam Janas Chayas Ahaitukam. Gam Chaya Ahaitukam. So it's said by, uh, you know, like Vasudeva Bhagavati. 
by, by rendering service to Vasudev, one immediately acquires, immediately acquires costless knowledge and detachment from this world. So that's, that's what's happening. As soon as we remember the Lord, as soon as we serve the Lord, we, we acquire knowledge, we, things become clear, our eyes open. You know, like I was born in the darkest ignorance and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. So we, we are, our eyes is opened by knowledge and then we can see, finally we can see the cataract of the material conditioning kind of get cleared up and we can see things as they are. So the demigods they see things as they are and they take shelter always of the lotus feet of the Lord. And then they go into, oh Lord, you assume incarnation for the creation, maintenance and dissolution of the cosmic manifestation. Therefore, we all take shelter of your lotus feet because they are all, always a world. Remembrance and courage to your devotee. Baja ure mana shri nanda nanda na. Abaya chara nara vila Baja, Baja, Baja is like, you know, the worship. It's like what's in our heart. Baja worship. Always worship the Lord, his feet of the Lord, who can make one feel less. You know, Baja, Abaya chara nara. One will be fearless at the Lord, his feet of the Lord. So that's the demigods, they pray, you know. They know that that's the only shelter, that there is no other shelter. So they are given a task, and we are given a task, and then we can go into Raja mode. Do, 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 and I want the results, and and uh, and then through that, create a lot of suffering for ourselves. Or we can go into like, okay, Krishna, I'm here. Inspire me, deliver me, show me causes mercy. Please let me take shelter at your lotus feet as I go about doing what you want me to do. Oh, you know, Lord, like there is a beautiful prayer, Christian prayer about, um, oh, uh, Holy Ghost, you know, beloved of my soul. It's so beautiful. Oh, Holy Ghost, beloved of my soul. Please tell me what to do. Console me. Shelter me. Like, show me where to go. Purify me and give me strength to be purified too. So here the demigods, they continue to wash, to glorify the Lord and they tell him, okay, the cosmic manifestation. And I like that word cosmic manifestation. What does that mean? You know, like just sometimes when I speak with people and they don't know about Krishna consciousness, those, those words sound like Wow, what is she speaking about? Cosmic manifestation. How many people speak about the thing of the cosmic manifestation? Usually we just think of our home, or maybe we think of our village. You know, some people think of Earth, you know, let's expand it. But we speak thinking of the cosmic manifestation. And when we think of the cosmic manifestation, that means not only Earth, or the 14 planetary system, but all the universes with many planetary systems within themselves. And he says that there is as many universes in the universe as there is of mustard seed in a big bag of mustard seed, unlimited amount of universes. So that give us like, oh, wow, let's get out of my way. You know, our life is so insignificant and so small, and we take it so seriously. It's a beginning and it's have an end. And, uh, you know, what was so important 10 years ago that we couldn't, like, let go of, or we couldn't, we couldn't believe, how oh, I'm going to go through that. It's gone now. It's insignificant. The things that was, like, completely absorbing our mind, so cosmic manifestation, you just saying that can help us to take some step back from our life and, and not taking take it as seriously or as all in all 
uh, and really focus like, okay, I mean, cosmic manifestation, I mean, that huge material cosmic manifestation, there is million of universe with living entities in all those universe. And I mean, one universe. And even in that one universe, there is unlimited amount of planets, 14 planetary system. And I'm in intermediary planetary system. That, and on that intermediary planetary system, there is also many, many planets. And I live on one planet Earth, one planet Earth with billions of people. And, and you know, I like, and then we can go down and then we, we from that vision, then we can understand we are like an ant. We are no more significant than an ant in a sense, than an ant in an pile. The ant pile thinks like, oh, that's all there is. And their life is so short. Like insects sometimes, like there is a love bug. And the love bugs, they go to all the stages of development that represent life. There are six stages of development that represent life. Birth, and then growth, expansion, you know, children like that. And then um, byproduct, creating byproduct. And then after a byproduct maintenance, and then dwindling and death, yeah? So that's the sixth stage. That's the sixth stage that represents life. Everywhere there is uh, life, life which means the, the uh, combination of five growth elements, three subtle elements, and a soul in it. So as any life that is made like that have those six stages. So those love bugs would take themselves very seriously, you know, they just take themselves very seriously. Their whole life with those six stages is in 24 hours. And so from us, we feel like, oh, what's the point? What's the point? But they don't think like that. They have children, they do everything they need to do. They, they, they have larvae somewhere or eggs to make sure that there is, that the, the, the species is going on of, of love bugs. And, uh, and so the demigods, they look at us and they must think the same way. 100 years for them is like a blink of an eye. Not quite, you know, but it's, uh, it's uh, you know, like a moment for Lord Brahma is one year on, on, on earth. Just a moment like that, one year. So when they look at our life, it's just insignificant. Like, like we look at the love box, it's the same thing. So, so the demigod, they have that vision and, uh, and uh, they speak from that vision, but they have responsibilities. They don't say, oh, it doesn't matter. Also human beings don't, who cares? You know, they are just, you know, born and die practically the same day. You know, for, for, for demigods, it's the same day. Who cares? No, they don't think like that. They think like there is a purpose. There is a purpose to the cosmic manifestation. And and Krishna, who is like, you know, Krishna, uh, Swayam Rupa, Krishna, the, the blue boy with the fruit. And he expands himself constantly for his own um, enjoyment. He's a supreme enjoyer. And uh, if we learn to be enjoyed by Krishna, then that's when we learn to completely enjoy to the max. Like if we want to enjoy to the max, we need, we need to uh, connect with the supreme enjoyer. And then, then and it's natural. Uh, Ananda Mayobi has that. We all seek happiness. You know, so it's like no point saying we don't seek happiness. That's what we do. We seek happiness. And, uh, you know, as long, as long as we are trying to find happiness separated from the reservoir of happiness, we are not going to find happiness. It's like trying to find water in a desert. Now, we speak about the desert a lot with Valerie. She have experience of the desert. I don't have any experience, but okay. Like my imagination is like desert, there is nothing growing there. But, you know, imagine that there is people there and they are looking for water. They are looking for water. Even so, there is river, sometimes in the desert or lake. But they say, oh, the legs, the river don't exist. That's what I was thinking. In fact, I was speaking with Valerie. I said, there is no water in the desert. She said, no, no, there is water. No, 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 there is no water. So I didn't believe there was water in the desert. 
So imagine that's a person like me, doesn't believe that there is water in a desert, even so there is river and lake. And so that person is digging, like digging with their hands, like, uh, digging, and their, their hands are bleeding, and they don't find water, or sometimes they find a drop of water. And then there is cactus, or there is some kind of scrub, and they are, they are going towards them, but they are full of, of like poking, they can poke you, and they're still insisting that they will find water. And they do, they do find some drop of water inside the cactus or the shrub. But again, like all the, the, the pointy, spiky things from the cactus, it just enters their hand and they are suffering so much. And at the end, it's not much water, a drop once in a while, but a lot of blood, a lot of sweat, a lot of pain connected with finding water in a desert coming from a place that there is no river and lake. But in fact, there is river and lake. And if one just goes to the river and lake, there is no effort. I can just splash myself. I can drink water from the lake and I'm fully satiated. So similarly, if we try to find happiness separated from the reservoir, Rama, Rama, we say Rama you know, uh, uh, in a, in a, in a, in a <clears throat> uh, Mahamantra, Ari Rama, Ari Rama, 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 Ari, Ari. So one, the name Rama means the reservoir of all pleasure. So let's plug into the reservoir of all pleasure. And then when we plug into the reservoir of all pleasure, it's like that. We just splash. We splash ourselves. There is no pain involved. There is no suffering involved. And uh, and then we can be happy without um, big endeavor. And um, so the demigods, they, they know that. And that's a place to be fear, fearless, Abaya. The remembrance, always a, a, a word, remembrance and courage uh, to your devotees. So the courage, the courage of what? What's courage? What's courage? What, what is courage? We can see. So the, the courage to trust, the courage to trust Krishna, the courage to trust the spiritual master, the courage to let go of our pre preconceived ideas. Like Draupadi, yesterday, uh, uh, Rachel was at my house and we spoke about Draupadi. And earlier also in the day, we were speaking with Ayapriya, she wanted to put a play on. And uh, she was thinking, oh, there's not many uh, women roles. And I said, well, we can have all the roles taken by women. So she ex was excited about that. But it's a play about Draupadi. And so we were speaking about Draupadi. And Draupadi, she, uh, she was the wife of the Pandavas. And the Pandavas, they were, um, they were um, challenged to gamble. They were challenged to gamble. That's the whole story of the battlefield of Kurukshetra. The Bhagavad Gita was spoken because of Draupadi. You know, really, if we boil it down to the core, the Bhagavad Gita was spoken because of Draupadi. And 600 million men died because of Draupadi. They took a stand for her. Krishna took a stand for her. 600 million men because of Draupadi. Because she was insulted. She was mistreated. She was, uh, you know, really uh, asserted deeply. So Draupadi, uh, so the, the, the Pandavas, they were, um, they were, um, they, they were a challenge to a gambling match. And they went to the gambling match and Sh Sh Shakuni, who was the uncle of Duryodhan and uh, brother-in-law of Dhritarashtra, he, he, he had received a blessing that nobody will ever be able to win a dice game. Like he, he, he won't be able to be, uh, he, he, he received a boon, you know, he did something and he received a blessing like that. And that, so every time he, 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 uh, he throws the dice, it's like the biggest number that can be existing and, and nobody can win. And so it's like a trickery. And so they trick the, the, the Pandava, knowing that they will win into that gambling match. And uh, the code of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Kshatriya 
is that if a kshatriya is um, asked by a woman for sex, or is challenged to a gambling match, or challenged to a, a fight, the code of the kshatriya is that the kshatriya is not to refuse, is to accept. So Yudhishthya Maharaj accepted, and they lost everything. They lost their wealth, they lost their kingdom, they even lost all their jewelry and, and their royal uh, garments. They lost everything and they were there and said, we have nothing. And then at that time, um, I think it's Karna who said, who said, what, well, you have Draupadi. And then, and then, and then, and then they said, well, you know, like, Yudhishthya Maharaj, he was kind of accepting that I need to be challenged again. And even so, his brother were really against it. Like Dushashan, he went to uh, get Draupadi. He, he, he pulled her by the air. He dragged her to the, to the assembly. And that, that day, Draupadi was in, uh, indisposed. And a woman with indisposed is not supposed to show herself. She's supposed to be retired retreat in her own energy, not to be around any man, not, not to be seen in society. And she wasn't disposed and she was dragged. She was pulled by the air, dragged to the assembly like that. And then when she arrives there, she was trembling. It's, it was, it, her hair were undo, like a woman never like show herself in society with her hair loose. It's, it's not Vedic, it's not proper. That's where she comes from. Property is very elevated. She was born of a sacrifice. She's a, she's a chest, a powerful yogini. She's an um, unbelievably, unbelievably powerful lady. And she's dragged like that in the front of an assembly of men in, in, in like, in, in her um, in her clothes, like the, the clothes that you know she wasn't dressed, her hair was loose, and she's dragged like that in the front of the assembly, and she trembled, and it's so humiliating for her to be in that situation. And then Dushashan, he decided to do even worse than that. He decided to disrobe her, so he started to pull her sari, started to pull her sari like that, and then and then she was like holding down to her side. She was thinking, I can protect myself. I can protect myself. He is not going to be able to do that. But Dusheshan was, was a kshatriya with big muscle, you know, like those big bodybuilder men that we see nowadays. So that's how the kshatriya are. They, are. they are really strong. Like they can fight elephants and crocodile and whatever. They are strong. So Dushashan was a kshatriya and he was pulling her size. There was no chance for her. And so she started to remember Lord Krishna because Lord Krishna, you know, gave her a boon. She can call on him anytime when she needs, she's in trouble. So she started timidly to call Lord Krishna, but still holding with one hand, she was holding to her sari, and she was calling on Krishna with one hand. Krishna, please save me. But she wasn't fully surrendered. And that's what we are speaking here. It's like really plugging into the reservoir of water, it is required courage. That's the courage we are speaking about. So Draupadi as first, she didn't tap into full courage. She was just holding her sari and then Krishna, Krishna help and holding her sari on the other hand. And then she realized, oh, I need to let go and not care what will happen. She didn't know if Krishna will come. She didn't know that maybe she will be disrobed, but she accepted. She found the courage to fully surrender and let go of her life and put her life at the lotus feet of the Lord. And she said, oh, Govinda, hey, Govinda. And she lets go of everything like that. Let go of her sari. And then, and then at that moment, Lord Krishna came because she could see she's, she's mine. She's with me. She surrendered. I'm going to take care of her. I gave her all the courage. And then he started giving miles and miles <laughs> of sari. And then Dushashan on the other hand, he's trying to disrupt her body. And, 
And our body got so exhausted that he stopped. He stopped. So that's the kind of courage we are speaking about. Not the courage of fighting lions, or not the courage to, you know, whatever. I was so reckless in my in my youth, for example. One could say, oh, you were so courageous. Yeah, I was reckless. Courageous, I don't know. I didn't have that courage. Courage means the ability to fully surrender, to fully trust the Lord, that the Lord is going to take care of me. That's what the courage of the, the um the demigod are speaking about. And then the demigods they are speaking like about how Krishna expands himself in a tree, Guna Avatar. So those Guna Avatar, um, they are in charge of different modes of material nature. And uh, so, you know, like the Lord expanding himself as Kshiroda Kashai Vishnu. And, and it's true that um, Prabhupada said at the end of his purport that when there is any trouble, like Krishna book starts like that, for those of you who uh, read Krishna book, at the beginning of Krishna book, Mother Earth is like so burdened. She's burdened by the military strength on her, on, on her back, on herself. So she takes the form of a cow and she goes to Lord Brahma and she says, it's too much. I cannot stand it. There is too much military strength. And Lord Brahma, I say, okay. And all the demigods, they go to Lord Vishnu. And often when there is trouble in a universe, in a universal affair, that's what the demigod goes. They go to Lord Vishnu to uh, find protection. So that's Lord Vishnu and he's in charge of the mode of goodness. And from goodness, we just finished the 14th chapter in our reading of Bhagavad Gita. We have a woman reading group and we finished the 14th chapter. And so we learned that we are conditioned by goodness. All the three modes of material nature, they are at the core of our material conditioning. So, but and goodness conditions us to, uh, it conditions us to uh, uh, happiness, the desire for happiness or the illusion of happiness. So that's a problem sometimes because we can be in illusion that we are happy. And at the same time from goodness, come um, illumination. We can receive illumination, knowledge. And from that place of goodness, we are closer to worship Vishnu because Vishnu is in charge of the mother goodness. And then, um, and then Lord Brahma, who is the creator of the universe, is in charge of the mother of passion. And passion conditions us to like ever unsatiated desire, ever unsatiated desire, desire for this and that, anchoring, lamentation. And what, what, what does that lead to? Um, a lot of effort, a lot of work, a lot of fruitive activity. That's, that's what the mode of Raja lead to for, for us, like, ah, work. Because we have is a constant desire, desiring something else. And um, and then there is the mode of ignorance, ignorance, and Lord Shiva is is in charge of the mode of ignorance. Lord Shiva is the greatest of all Vaishnav. Vaishnava, hmm, Vaishnava, 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 Nam Yata Shambhu. He's the greatest of all Vaishnav, and he gets his job. And his job is to be in charge of the mode of ignorance. He doesn't say, oh, no, because of a devotee, I won't be in charge of the mode of ignorance. I only want things to do, to do things in the mode of goodness. Well, no, that's not, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. It doesn't make a complete universe. So for the complete universe, you know, some devotees, they take charge of the mode of ignorance. Lord Shiva, who is the greatest devotees, he takes charge of the mode of ignorance. You know, being a devotee doesn't mean that I only do things in the mode of goodness necessarily. Like, you know, like we have different propensity and we want to use all of them in the service of Krishna. So Lord Shiva is in charge of the mode of ignorance and the mode of ignorance conditions us to madness, delusion, complete madness. And then, and then the work in the mode of ignorance will also lead to madness. So it's condition us and work in the mode of ignorance will bring like madness, intense attachment, darkness, it's all come for the mud. 
So, um, so the, the demigods, they appreciate that the Lord expands into those incarnations. And in his purport, Shia Prabhupada making sure that we understand that um, the demigods and those guna avatar, they are not equal to the Lord. They are, you know, they are, they are expansion of the Lord. We are expansion of the Lord too. We're just minute, tiny expansion of the Lord. Lord Brahma is one of us, is a Jiva soul with a special role in, in, Bhagavata, in the Bhagavatam. He said that at one point or another, we, we, we were all Lord Brahma. And of course, there is more than one Brahma. There is unlimited amount of Brahmas in the cosmic manifestation. So um, when, when we uh, decide to enjoy separated from Krishna, it's not like we fall in, in, in the middle of Kali Yoga in 2023. <laughs> it's like a slow downward spiral, like a low, slow, low, slow downward spiral. So, um, so Srila Prabhupada in his purport, he said, um, let's see where. The incarnation of Vishnu in the material world is, however, directly worshipped by the demigod. It is, it, uh, it is learned from various scriptures that the demigod approached Lord Vishnu in the ocean of milk and summit the grievance. So uh, at the beginning of Krishna book, we can see that. And throughout the Bhagavatam, that's what the uh, demigod do every time. Like when Hiranyakashipu was trembling, like the world was trembling because of Hiranyakashipu's um, austerity. Then the demigods, they went to, uh, they went to Lord Brahma. And then, uh, and then after that, Lord Brahma, he, he ran to, uh, Lord Vishnu, and then Lord Vishnu said, "Okay, I will save the day." And he came, he came um, as a half lion, half, half lion, and half a man. So they all, they, they often also when when somehow the, uh, the demons are able to uh, vanquish the demigods, they also go to Lord Vishnu and say, "Oh, oh, the demons are everywhere! Please help!" That's what the <laughs> in the sun the demigod. That's why, uh, you know, like um, the, the pure devotee is superior to the demigod because the demigod, a pure devotee never approached Lord Vishnu or Krishna for any material, anything. A pure devotee is not going to go to the Lord for material protection. The demigods is still, you know, there are still some material desires, some material something there. And um, So worship Lord Vishnu, thus they are all counted among the demigod and not the supreme personality of Godhead. So that's a point that what Prabhupada makes that's important because some people kind of put everybody on the same level. Brahma, Shiva, Durga, Ganesh, they're all one, but it's not true. They all exist and they are very powerful beings and they, are, they have a lot of ability that we don't have, and for sure, we can see them as superior. They are very superior to us, but they are not the ultimate superior. The ultimate superior is Lord Vishnu and Krishna. So I'm going to stop here, because it's nine. I could speak uh, um, way more about so many points, but I'm going to give space for conversation. Vishvasya janmastiti samya marte, krita vatarasya padam bujante, vajema salve sharanam yatisha, smitam prayat bayam swapum sam. O Lord, you assume incarnation for the creation, maintenance, and dissolution of the cosmic manifestation. And therefore, we are all, we all take shelter at your lotus feet, because they always award remembrance and courage to your devotees. Remembrance and courage to your devotees. Hi, Krishna. Thank you for listening. And um, any uh, comment, question, challenges, or uh, sharing of what's happening for you, reading this verse, hearing the class. Hi, Krishna. Question about Brahma. Okay, hold on. I'm going to turn the computer to make sure everybody here Valerie's question. 
So I'm, I'm confused about Brahma. Okay. Because Brahma is, is form, right? When we were talking the other uh, day about like, Brahman. Brahman. There's a difference Brahman. between Brahman and Brahma. Okay. And then you also said, so I want to hear that difference. And then okay. you also said that Brahma is, takes many different forms in different universes. Okay. I will speak about that. Brahma and Brahman. A lot of people um, Well, what works best is just pick the video out for a moment. Okay, do that. Okay, yeah, it worked. Okay, so you know it's it's a it's a common question and confusion, even more so. You know, everything is so new when you read Krishna books, um, Prabhupada's books, uh, you know, the first year or so of reading them. There is so many vocabulary and so much to absorb. So Brahma and Brahman, a lot of people tend to confuse the two. So Brahman is an aspect of Krishna. Vadantita tattva vidas dhyanam yaj dhyanam advyayam pameti pamam beti bhagavaniti shabdhyate. So um, uh, this is uh, Sutta Goswami is speaking to the sage of Naimashaya. And he said, Learn transcendentalists who know this non dual substance called the absolute truth in terms of three features Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. And the, Bra the Brahman feature is an all pervading feature. You can see as the Brahman feature, you can see as all the emanation. We are all emanation of the Lord, like we are all rays of the sun like the, the sun rays is made of little particle of light and but it looks like a ray of sun so brahman you can see it as a sun rays full of little particle of light so if we had the, the eyes to see brahman for example we will see all souls you know not simply three souls of the three human beings here but also we look outside and every blade of grass we will see a spark of the soul so that will be uh, uh, the, the, um, the, um, the, 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 the effulgence of the soul. That's what we will see. And of course, a combined effulgence of the soul make like a, a glaring, a, a glaring um, mass called Brahman. That's everywhere. Yeah. And so Paramatma is the Lord in, is a localized aspect of Krishna. It's like the sun globe. You know, there is a sun rays that pervert everything. And then the sun globe is only in one place. So that's Paramatma. And then Bhagavan is the sun god. You know, it's, it's a person. There is a person behind the sun. And so Bhagavan is a is a personal aspect of Krishna. So that's 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 a different aspect of Krishna and Krishna's energy manifestation. And Lord Brahma, Lord Brahma is the first created being and Lord Brahma is uh, the engineer of the universe. He come out, Lord Vishnu, Lord Krishna expands himself as Balaram. So his first expansion, we were speaking about that the other day. He expands himself as Balaram. And then, then from Balaram, then Balaram expands himself for, for form called Chaturvyuha. It's a little complicated, but you know, by Sudev, Shankarshan, and Yoda Pradyumya. And then, and then Narayans come, which, and then another chateau viewer, you know, that like comes. And from them, like from each of them, a limited amount of Vishnu form manifest. And then those Vishnu forms sometimes they come on earth for a certain purpose, like that. And one purpose, the Purusha avatar, is creation. So there is Mahavishnu that come is coming and he laid on. Hmm. So that's that's a picture. You can look at it. So Mahavishnu like here he laid on and from from the power of his body and from his breath, every time he breathes in, he breathes out, he breathes all the universe and all the cosmic manifestation, his breath is is that cloud 
of of Pradhan and then that become mad as well as soon as he infuse all the soul into it. And as soon as he breathes in, when he breathes in, he breathes, he breathes in all the universes. And then he expands himself again to enter every universe and be the super soul of the universe. So Mahavishnu is the super soul of the cosmic manifestation and he expands himself, he becomes the super soul of the universe. And then he expands himself again as you know the, the super soul inside the heart. And then that's Vishnu that the demigods approach. And the one that's the super soul of the universe from his belly button comes a lotus flower. And that in that lotus flower, Brahma appear. He's like a, he's the first born and he's not born of a mother and that's the first created being. And Brahma is a very elevated being that Krishna trusts a lot. He's a spirit soul that is very powerful and was uh, qualified to take charge. You know, like sometimes we have engineer and you know, if you if you want to build something, you you're very careful the engineer you choose because you want them to be knowledgeable and also have experience. So Brahma is like that, he's the engineer of the universe, so you need super qualified soul to have that role. So he's given that role. And Brahma is um because he's very, very intelligent, he has four heads in all directions. You can see all directions, he has four heads. And you know, of course, forehead make eight eyes and all that, and and um, <laughs> a crushing thing. There is that uh, um, <laughs> our universe <laughs> is the smallest universe in the cosmic manifestation. Oh, crushing! I was thinking America was the most important country, but our universe is the smallest universe, and Earth is not that. You know, anyway. And then in other universe, Brahma may appear with eight head or, you know, 800 head or thousand or hundreds of thousand or millions of head. Because in bigger universe, you need a bigger intelligence and more head to think about all the aspects of the universe. So that's the shape of Brahma. That's all very far out. And we just can see, okay, like, I don't understand that. It doesn't make sense. But another part of us feel, oh, it feels good. And another part of us can be like, why not? It's more far out than any um, Hollywood or even Bollywood movie. Human being can create so much, you know, poetry or, or ghastliness with their imagination. So why Krishna couldn't create by having... Um, uh, uh, his first created being coming out of a lotus feet, uh, a lotus flower, and a forehead. Why not? Give a better, give a better way, give a better way for creation to take place. Huh? We can just do that, guys. So that's Brahma. He's the engineer of the universe, and he's the head of all the demigods. And he's, so when the demigods have a problem, they go to Brahma first. And then, and then Brahma is worshipped in Vishnu. And Brahma goes to Lord Vishnu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brahma, is. Brahma is a person. And it was like a, and to connect with Brahma and Brahman. So Brahman, as Mama you said, Brahman means uh, spirit. 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 So Brahma, he's he's spiritually realized. The Brahmin sector of society, you mentioned the Kshatriyas and there's Vaishyism. So the Brahmins they're the ones who are supposed to be spiritually realized. They've realized Brahman. They see the spirit in every... Mm. That's another, another um, aspect, like Brahman is the old other thing, but it's yeah. also part of the Varnashram. It's also a person, Brahman. Yeah. The Brahman, the right. Kshatriya. And then they, in the traditional Vedic system, one comes to Brahman realization, you're, you're a Brahman, then you go to super soul realization, then you, then you go to Bhakti. Like, mm. that's the... Prabhupada did it. Prabhupada said he would like there's like the traditional system like you climb a thousand flights of steps. Prabhupada's giving us an elevator. Okay, that's a whole discussion. So Brahma 
is the name's not by accident because he's realized in spirit. He's he, he's realized in Brahman, and Brahman, it, it's the name of a post, just like and as Ramana showed, small as you know. So there's a you gave the mustard seed an, an analogy. So each universe has a Brahma who's the chief engineer. Sometimes Brahma is seen as the creator, but more precisely, uh, more precisely, Brahma, he's the chief engineer. He doesn't create the elements. The, the, the material elements come from Vishnu. And, he's given a workshop. He's, yeah, he's, he's given a workshop and he creates, yeah. And Vishnu. With his nose Vishnu. and ears. What's that? He's giving a workshop with nose and ears. Yes. And yeah. eyes. Yeah. And, and, and legs and. <laughs> all the elements. So each universe has a Brahma who's the chief engineer. And, um, and then, so Brahma is the post, just like. Each country has a president. Okay. President is the name of the post. President or prime minister. And then there's like this other thing. John Smith, the president, or Mary Jones. Okay. So just Brahma is the name of a post. Indra is the name of a post. And uh, and that's actually, we, we, we get some information about the, uh, the names of the great personalities who fill those posts. That's also there in Bhagavad So, yeah, so Brahma, Brahma is sometimes seen as a creator, but he's, yeah, he, the, the workshop, all the materials of the workshop, eyes, nose, the, the, the material elements. And then he creates, he creates in response to the karmic, the, the karmic results, the karmic desires of the living entities like us. And so Brahma, through his demigod assistance, we get a particular type of body and the trees are open. Hare Krishna. Okay. Any other question? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear Kim. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to say, I just... Uh, Part of what I loved on this verse was um, that when it ends with, um, if we take shelter of Krishna, he'll give us remembrance and courage and your, you know, beautiful telling of Draupadi's story. But it just, I love that verse, um, w w those words, just because I just think it's just the most miraculous thing. Like from the time I was like five, I became aware of dying and became very afraid and um, stayed afraid uh, through, and then I, when I first heard Krishna consciousness um, from somebody, I remember it's, you know, so amazingly well, uh, the woman took like three hours to talk to me and that fear, and I'm still a fearful person, anyone who knows me would know that, but that fear, that really heavy fear lifted and, um, you know, just her you know, reminding me, telling me, teaching me that we're, you know, eternal spirit soul um, and that and the, the courage that came from all of what she taught me was just so amazing. Uh, and so those words just really resonated. And it's just a very beautiful gift that Krishna gives us through through this philosophy. I just want to say that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um... Kim Salvasya Chaham Hidi Sani Bisto Matas Miti Kyanam Apunanam Cha. So Krishna is, is in our hearts and is is you know like um, he's also Ishwara um Ishwara Sava Bhutana Bhidishi to uh, uh, um to study Arjuna is is inside the heart and is is guiding the wandering and it's him. Who, who guided you to that devotee who spoke for you to you for three hours, and you were from very young age you were aware of like of death, and of course when a child is aware of death and doesn't have the knowledge, and naturally a child doesn't have the knowledge, it becomes very scary losing someone, losing my mom, losing losing anyone, is very very scary, and then. Uh, 
out of your desire, sincere desire to know Krishna in your heart, Matasmitya Poanamcha kind of guided you because he guided the wandering of all the living entity, he guided you to that person. And that person was in charge of representing Krishna to remind you, remind you of who you are, your spirit, soul, having a human experience. And you are eternally so, and your eternal, <clears throat> eternal spirit soul, and that there is no death. There is really no death. Death doesn't exist. Death is only the death of the body. It's just a change of clothing. It's just a, a transition from one body to the next as we always transit the hinos minyata dehe. So we, 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 we transit from one body to another during this, this lifetime, like I was sharing earlier. You know, we were thinking things were very significant 10 years ago when we were in a different body. And now in this body, and we think like, ah, it wasn't significant at all. And at the time of death, it's, it's a change of body. And uh, the sober person is not disturbed by such a change. And it was a relief. You really felt like a, a lift of fear. Not all the fear goes away. However, you experience the remembrance and all the remembrance gave you courage. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Krishna? I'll say I, I really like how you handled the uh, Debbie Gunn's self, self esteem issue. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's like, oh, they, uh, they need a workshop on self esteem or something. Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami, his quote, and first prophet puts that, that the, he just says, I'm, I'm, I'm lower than a worm in stool. Like that. Shiva his poems, 1965. About Boston Harbor and the Jala Dute, Prophet saying, I have no knowledge, I have no devotion. So he's really feeling that way. Prophet saying, I have no knowledge, I have no devotion. And so then you made the key point, but it's, this isn't grungy from them, right? So, like, oh, self esteem, we should believe in ourselves and have confidence when they, they don't seem. Um, but that can be very, we should believe in so it, it can be very. Um, shallow, yeah, superfluous. Whereas, uh, so we were talking yesterday, right, in the Prashad preparation time about like every emotion has its spiritual origin and, and uh, like that, whether it's anxiety, fear, shame, craziness, insanity. It's also this. So this, so this isn't like a material low self-esteem. But like I said, this, this is true humility that's leading the demigods to deeper inspiration to connect with God. It's leading Krishna's cover. So Krishna's cover, that's, that's what it was. He's saying, I'm, I'm lower than the worm in stool. Oh, you know, you should believe in yourself. But that feeling, that emotion, it's leading him he was like in his late 90s and like with practice, it was impossible for him to physically function. But it's leading him to, to deep, unbreakable, unstoppable inspiration to give this, this sublime, inconceivable gift of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Srila, Srila Prabhupada's supposedly low self esteem, I have no knowledge, no, no devotion. It moved him through such commitment to to serve the mission of his spiritual master. And that's that's why we're all discussing Bhagavatam. So thanks for that. And yeah, and you shared about like your yeah, like her own cosmic manifestation. And and then when, when you shared that, and people might think of my my city, my family, my the cosmic man. So I was just appreciating in the program Prabhupada gave us, like they just gave us like we can even take it for granted that we're we're trained to to be philosophical. We're trained to be because like most people, ninety nine point nine percent, like like this is just so special. It's just like part like part of part of everyone's morning is these like profound, amazing philosophical discussions. Like who who does that? Who who does that? Like it's a ritual question. Practically no one. So. Here in 
the devotional line calling Prabhupada was just like an intrinsic part of what we cultivate. Churning philosophical perspectives, philosophical outlet. So that's what came to me when you shared. Anything else? Yes. Yeah. Hi Krishna Mother Malini. Hi Krishna Richard. Thank you for class. I was um I just have kind of like a reflection, but I was thinking about um I I love the I love the story of Dropadi and um how much courage it takes to trust and the one quote that's really simple that I was coming to me is let, let go and let God. And it's like, let go and let Krishna. And um, when we like resist um, and when we think that we're in control, so much suffering comes. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, when we're able, it takes so much courage to trust. It takes so much courage to trust that we're not in control. Um, and it's like, it's a really beautiful reminder that um to let go takes a lot of courage to trust in krishna takes a lot of courage but when we do it creates a lot less suffering yeah and then the other piece was like when we that you said when we plug into the source of happiness then that comes like what i gathered like sustainable happiness mm -hmm. um and one of my teachers, Leela, just always says, like, imagine yourself plugging into, like, having an electricity cord coming from you and plugging into source. And but I never put together, like, imagine myself, like, plugging into Krishna, um, to to God from the place of, like, what's created like where happiness is created where all, all pleasure is created and from that place of remembering to to plug into that source i can have more sustainable more long lasting happiness joy pleasure um courage um so within that is a reminder of like where all of those like qualities emanate from. Um, and the times that I feel like I'm not happy or I'm not um, in joy or gratitude is because I'm not plugged in to that source. Um, so it's a really beautiful reminder for me. So thank you. Thank you for sharing, Rachel. Let go and let God. And yeah, Krishna, and to have the courage because really, if we are honest with ourselves, we constantly are in contact with Krishna because Krishna is constantly in contact with us. He doesn't stop speaking to us in his form as Paramatma. He's guiding us. He's, he's constantly like there, telling us turn right, turn left, whatever. And uh, and sometime in our life. We hear him, and sometimes we don't hear him. And often we hear him, hear him, and we pretend not to know because it doesn't fit our agenda. It doesn't fit our plan for happiness. The, the, the planning committee, Shri Prabhupada said, planning, we are always making plans. And most of our plans, they are separated from Krishna. Mm -hmm. And because when we hear the supersoul guidance, it doesn't match our planning committee and then we pretend you know to know why because whatever we hear from super so maybe it really doesn't fit what i want to do or it's too difficult or too hard or or doesn't make sense sometimes or even go against what i'm thinking is good and uh, so it, it takes courage to uh to to let go and let god and just trust that voice and and allow ourselves to uh, do like Draupadi, put our arm and not know. 
She didn't put her arm up thinking Krishna will give her sari. She put her arm up in surrender, accepting that maybe she will be disrobed. It's not like we put our arm up simply, oh, I know Krishna will protect me. He, he will cover my body. There is not much courage in that. She put her arm up, you know, accepting that maybe she will be naked in front of the assembly. Mm -hmm. To just, you know, be with Krishna. And Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure. And is is, is the supreme enjoyer. And when we really hear that, is a supreme enjoyer. And every time is, you know, like from his enjoyment, we manifest. So his desire of when there is no difference between his desire and the reality. And we are born of the desire of the Lord to enjoy. So we are made for his enjoyment. And then as secondary enjoyer, then, uh, you know, secondary enjoyer, then, uh, then uh, when we plug, we put the plug into the, the reservoir of all pleasure, then we are, you know, we are, you know, poor, poor water, like unlimited amount of, of happiness that's not deterred by any material suffering or my, in any material situation or circumstances. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, Richard, for sharing. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Anything else? Grant the rage. Grant the rage. She might bag of a time. A key. Hi, Krishna. Thank you.